Grace and peace be unto you in the matchless name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. We're going to cut across the field today for the Lord has already ministered to our hearts. He's already encouraged us to continue to run on to see what the end is going to be. This, what the Lord is doing in this moment is right in line with the word of the Lord today. So we thank the Lord for the confirmation for there is liberation and we move from broken to healed. We certainly honor the presence of the Lord that is rich and full in this place and to all of our officials, our guests, our friends and family, those who are viewing virtuously, I pray that the Lord was able to minister to your heart in that moment, knowing that the best is yet to come. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for this moment of surrender. We thank you, O oh God, for your anointing that makes ministry possible. We ask you, Lord, in the name of Jesus, to continue to minister to your people. We ask you now to allow your word to go forth with power, precision, and clarity. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, our Lord, our strength, and our Redeemer. Let the church of the living God say amen. Some trust in horses, and some trust in chariots. But we that trust in the Lord, we have been given the victory. This morning's text, Luke chapter 8, verses 43 through 48. We will land on verse 48. Now a woman, having a flow of blood for 12 years, who has spent all her livelihood on physicians and could not be healed by any, came from behind and touched the border of his garment. And immediately her flow of blood stopped. And Jesus said, who touched me? When all denied it, Peter, those with him said, Master, the multitudes throng and press you, and you say, who touched me? But Jesus said, someone touched me. Mm. For I perceive power going out from me. Now when the woman saw that she was not hidden, she came trembling and falling down before him. And she declared to him in the presence of all the people for the reason she had touched him and how she was healed immediately. Verse 48 says, and he said to her, daughter, be of good cheer for your faith has made you well go in peace. I want to read the 48th verse where we're going to land our hat today from the message version. Jesus said, child, you took a risk trusting me mm. and now you're healed and whole. Live well, lived blessed. This is the reading of the Lord's word for the Lord's people. Thanks be unto God. You may have your seat. Here in the text, this is the biblical account of a woman with an issue of blood. We understand that Jesus, our Christ, is gender neutral. He is concerning in this moment a woman, a child of God, going through issues, trials, and tribulations. Immediately, when we call this name a woman with an issue, we know exactly who we are talking about because her identity is within this issue. We, beloved, this morning, we go through issues. We have obstacles and situations that prevent us from walking in progress and pursuing all that God has promised us. We, beloved, this morning, every ethnicity, every background has issues. If we're honest today, we want to share in this moment with the woman with the issue of blood, knowing that the Lord is with us. And if God be for us, he is more than anything against us. If we're honest, after we sit in the tension of the text, 
We understand that God is for us, but the enemy sometimes throws issues in our path and makes it difficult for us to touch God. Today, we look at this scripture and it speaks of the opposition that we go through, the obstacles trying to hold us back from obtaining the fullness of the promises that God has given us. We thank God for this child of God that fought through the opposition. She fought through the blockage and she touched and tapped into power. Here, my first point, an issue. When there is a problem, God is there to solve it. We at times have issues with money, We have issues with our resources. We have issues with our relationships. We have issues with our family. And our issues at times can be public and embarrassing. This woman in the text, to give you a little background concerning her issue, she was considered unclean. And if anyone touched her, they would become unclean from that day forward. She had a relationship with her family and a relationship with physicians who promised her that they could fix the problem. They could not help. The Jews even had many remedies, such as herbal drinks, but they were helpless to cure the problem. This issue, beloved, at times can take all that we have. If we're honest today, long problems have a tendency to drain us. It goes on and on until we spend most of our time, our talent, and our resources trying to fix it. Some of us today are the strongest in our families. And how many know that strong people get drained too? The issue here at times was concerning everyone connected to the child of God. And the issue forced her to become isolated, living in isolation. Sometimes we find ourselves not believing in God and knowing that we've run out of options. We know in this moment that Jesus Christ, the son of the living God, who is the greatest power and we cannot be defeated, provided her with what I call a blood transfusion. Jesus exchanged his blood for hers, his life for hers. Here God is telling us today that greater is he that's in you than he that's in this world. Even though you're going through problems, God said, I'm here to solve them. And if I can submit to you my subject this morning as I tag the text, Jesus can handle it. Come on and tell yourself this morning, Jesus can handle it. I don't know what your it is, but God told me to let you know that he works beyond the crisis. If we are honest today, we have at times, my second point, an identity crisis. She was a child of God. She was identified as a daughter of the king of kings. But this issue tried to prevent her from walking in the fullness of her identity. The Bible says you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people that you should show forth the praises of him who has called you out of darkness into the marvelous light. You are the head and not the tail. That you are above only and not beneath. But sometimes problems are so big they swallow us up in our identity. Have you ever lost sight of who you were in Christ? But God says, I am the Christ that works beyond the crisis. 
When the devil starts bothering you, he is trying to prevent you from getting something and somewhere. See, sometimes if we're honest, we can think about our problem and our perception becomes distorted. And we lose sight of whose we are and who we are and we lose sight of the promises of God. We make our problem bigger than God. See, beloved, this morning when you start to magnify the problem more than the promise, you are praising the problem. And whatever you praise will be magnified in your life. But I'm here to declare to you that God is the greatest power and we shall not be defeated. See, in this moment, she understood the authority of God. She pressed past the crowd because she knew that the Savior was passing by. She lifted up her head and she saw the aura of authority, knowing that if she had enough faith, it can remove the situation. If she had enough faith, she can touch the hem of his garment and she would be made whole. I want to lay my hat at verse 48 for one moment where it says you took a risk trusting me and now you are healed and made whole and live blessed. See, beloved, this morning she took what we call a calculated risk. She knew that this was a risk worth taking because the result would be successful and very good. I'm wondering if there's anyone here this morning that will take a risk on God, knowing that God will bless you even in the midst of your situation. I find that our greatest blessings often come after our greatest desperation. I find that our greatest healings come after our greatest hurts. I find that our greatest delivery comes after a great bondage. I find that our greatest joy will come after our greatest sorrow. Here, God is reminding us that in the midst of a dark place, that weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. I want to submit to you my third point, incredible faith. See, God never shows up without an anticipation of a showdown. See, we cannot listen to human edicts, but we must tap in to spiritual expectation. God said, I am the consecrator, and you are more than a conqueror because of Jesus Christ. He understands that we go through challenges and situations, but we cannot see the testimony until we pass the test. But God understands that our faith may be a little faulty. But our faulty faith does not prevent God from functioning in his power. God is reminding us that his power can function under any circumstances. That his power is concrete. And when we talk about biblical faith, it is the concrete confidence in the word of God, regardless of our circumstances or consequences. God is reminding us that faith without works is dead. So show me your faith without works, and I will show you my faith by my works. Faith this morning, beloved, should motivate us to act. Faith is a reminder that it is the substance of things hoped for. 
and the evidence of things not seen. When you run out of options, all you can do is say, help, Lord. And he is on the way. This woman hit her rock bottom. She tried everything that she could. But God said, I will make you whole. So God is reminding us in this moment that if you are able to tap into Jesus, you will tap into power. I believe, beloved, this morning that when she saw Jesus Christ, our Lord, she saw the lily of the valley. She saw the bright and morning star. She saw the alpha and omega. She saw the beginning and the end. She saw the king of kings. She saw the Lord of lords. She knew that he was a lifter of her head and a keeper of her soul. Is there anyone here this morning that knows that God will work on your behalf? See, I've come to let you know that Jesus is on the case. That he told me to tell you this morning that you've gone through many accidents. But the impact did not kill you because the blood still works. And it never loses its power. The angels keep watch over you all day and all night. Is there anyone in the sanctuary that knows that God is up to something? And he's up to something good. Is there anyone this morning that's ready for a suddenly? That God told me to tell you. That he is turning things around for your good. I understand you've gone through situations. But God said the kingdom of heaven suffers violence. And the violent must take it by force. See, you have endured a difficult season. But God said it's pushing you to your destiny. He told me to let you know. That he saw you in the situation. That he saw you in the crisis. That he saw you in the dilemma. That he saw you in a hard place. But God said because you touched him, you were able to tap in to his power. Is there anyone in the sanctuary this morning that knows that the enemy is defeated? And God is exalted. See, the enemy thought he had you down. But God said that he changed his plan. Is there anyone in the sanctuary that knows that the enemy was laughing? That the enemy was snickering? That the enemy thought that he had you by the hand? But God said that you're more than a conqueror. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. See, I stopped by to let you know that you cannot fall apart in this season. Because God said he's working on your behalf. See, the enemy thought he had you. But you can lift your hands and say thanks be unto God who's given us the victory. And caused us to triumph through Christ Jesus. See, I stop by to let you know that you are anointed to survive. See, I want you to know this morning that you are anointed to endure. Is there anyone in the sanctuary that can give God a good praise? That sometimes we're discouraged. That sometimes we want to give up. But God said in this season, I need you to stretch out on faith. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Is there anyone in the sanctuary that owes God a good praise? When the praises go up, the blessing have to come down. 
Is there anyone this morning that knows that help is on the way? See, I stopped by to let you know that God told me to tell you that he's blessing you in this season. Is there anyone in a sanctuary that's been wounded on your journey? But God told me to let you know you've been worried for a long time. Why would you worry when you have the word? Why would you worry when you have a warrior? I need you to throw in some praise right there that your destiny is greater than your disaster. Is there anyone this morning that knows that God is able to do exceeding and abundantly above all you can ask or think according to the power that worketh within you? Is there anyone here this morning that understands that God, he told me to let you know that your condition is not your conclusion. God told me to tell you that the trial had to come to make you stronger. That's why you cried many tears, but weeping just endures for a night. And joy comes in the morning. Is there anyone in the sanctuary that understands that God will do exactly what he says? That what's coming is better than what's been. I need you to tell your neighbor, say neighbor, Jesus can handle it. I know the enemy, he tried to take you out, but God told me to let you know that our God is greater and our God is stronger and our God is higher than any other. See, I stopped by to let you know that faith is motivating you to action. That God told me to tell you that he is going to do this thing because he made you a promise and because of his promise you must give him praise is there anyone in the sanctuary that knows that God is able in spite of what it looks like there's a press towards the mark of the high calling in Jesus Christ our Lord is there anyone that can stand on your feet and clap your hands up all ye people and shout with the voice of triumph the Bible says let the redeemed of the Lord say so who's been snatched back from the hand of the enemy there are some people here this morning that touch into power that tapped into glory is there anyone that's ready for suddenly in your life i'm so glad that jesus can handle it i'm so glad that jesus he cares he promised to never leave us or forsaken us but he said i'll be with you in the midst of it i'll be with you through the battle i'll be with you for the long haul why because i can handle it see i stopped by to let you know that they crucified our savior and they had a nerve to call it a good friday why could they possibly let us know they crucified them and called it good i'm so glad that you asked because he said i can handle it so i stopped by to let you know on a good friday they hung them high and stretched 
consumed by and all day and all night on Saturday he said I can handle it and then early on Sunday morning he got up with all power in his hands he told me to let you know to give it to him because he can handle it give God good praise 